Go. What's going on guys, it's Zach from Weapon Works LLC. I appreciate you guys joining us today. So one of the questions we get in the store all the time is that nice rifle worth what it's going to cost. So what we did is we took this DB15, which is the cheapest rifle that we have on the wall, it's an entry level carbine, and we ran a 500 round course of fire and we put it head to head against one of our employees super nice custom builds to see how nice or how everything run. We, we're going to give you our pros and cons. We're going to tell you what we like and what we don't like about each one. And we were kind of surprised with the results. And as a bonus, at the end of the video, stay tuned, we're going to take this DB15 that we used in the video, we're going to sandblast it down, we're going to re-seracote it, and we're going to give it away to one of you guys. So stay tuned for that, and I appreciate you guys being with us. Enjoy the video. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Blue from WeaponWorks LLC. And I'm Angel. Today we'll be discussing the comparison that we did between a DB-15 from Diamondback and a Radian ADAC lower build that I set up a couple years ago. It's worth around 4K. The Diamondback is around 700 in the store right now. And we took them through a course of fire that my buddy Angel will explain real quick. So we did a 500 round course of fire involving some movement, mag changes, and the VTAC barriers. Um, every other round was PMC Braun, then Tula Steel Case, and we're going to get into uh, the results that we found. So first off, we'll talk about the accuracy between the two rifles. They were very comparable. Um, no difference that we could really notice. What about you? Yeah, uh, the Diamondback had a 16-inch barrel, whereas the uh, custom build had a 14.5. Um, but that being said, like the accuracy was pretty much uh, the same between the two guns. We only took them out around 80 to 100 yards for the test. I'm sure if we stretched them out uh, past 300 or so, we may see some sort of difference. Uh, it's a Centurion, uh, Colt, Hammer Forest, Chrome Line Barrel in my build. Super high end, it's worth around, we sell them for like 319. And then the Diamondback has a one and seven twist, button cut, nitride finish barrel. So those are the difference between those. The main differences that we felt between the two rifles had to be ergonomics. I had a bunch of issues personally due to the fact that the Radian ADAC lower kind of spoiled me in the past couple years in comparison to running a regular mil spec AR-15. I had some issues with mainly the ambi bolt release and the safety selector and stuff like that. The Diamondback also had a 90 degree standard AR-15 safety. What issues did you run into when you were running it? Yeah, so I noticed the safety also when I switched from uh, right hand, which I'm right handed, to left hand on the VTAC barrier. Um, I went for the safety on the right side of the gun and it wasn't there because it's a standard just on the left side of the gun. Um, so that was one thing I noticed with the safety. Um, also with the gas block being an A2 front sight, uh, it got really hot during the 500 round course of fire and also it restricted our ability to get out long on the gun. So we kind of had to uh, fire more compressed. Um, so that was one thing. On the VTAC barrier, when we were in the prone or doing any high angle shots, the A2 front sight would get in the way of the optics. So you'd have to like shift your head left or right which wasn't an issue with the custom build uh, because it didn't have an A2 front sight. All right, I will say though that the Diamondback was on another level in terms of weight. <laughs> in comparison to my rifle, it was pretty heavy. Um, we had to run around with both of them, so uh, you were able to feel the difference a lot more than if you were just sitting there on the bench shooting. I also noticed a really big difference in a recoil impulse. I actually ru uh, run the Voltor A5 system with a H3. H3 uh, with the uh, spring coat green spring and I was running a suppressor as well. That just made sure that the rifle just 
uh, shot really smooth throughout the course of fire. It was a really big difference in terms of how much the dot moved mm -hmm. uh, whenever I pulled the trigger for me. I noticed that as well with the recoil impulse. Um, the height over bore was also much different because we just threw a, a low mount on the Diamondback, whereas uh, the custom build has a Unity fast mount on it. Um, so that was a noticeable difference. The furniture on the DB, it has just a standard uh, AR furniture in terms of the pistol grip and the stock, which was a lot less comfortable than um, the stuff Blue has on his gun. Yeah, I would have to agree, especially the texture on the butt stock of the Diamondback. I don't know what they were thinking whenever they set up that knurling, but it's extremely aggressive to the point where it was uh, snagging on my clothes and gear when it's not even a, a obtrusion. It was just friction that was just um, taking over and creating issues for me. Uh, another thing that I really uh, didn't like about the Diamondback, I might be a snob about this, but it definitely was the trigger. The trigger was very heavy compared to my uh, Geisley SSAX that is super nice. They just came out with it last year. Um, it's around four and a quarter pounds, I think. The Diamondback felt like five, seven, six. It was inconsistent and really heavy. That was probably the only consistent thing about the trigger from my personal experience. Yeah, I agree on the, the trigger as well. Obviously, a, a Geisley is gonna be a, a lot nicer option than, um, than a mil spec. Um, the sling setup was also different. So Blue has his sling set up on QDs. They're just in a really good position. Whereas with the Diamondback, we were restricted to where we could put the sling. So we had to do it from the bottom of the stock and then the bottom of the A2 front sight. Um, and when you're you know, transitioning to pistol or just moving in general, um, having it slung from the bottom of the gun can be really cumbersome. So that was uh, another difference that uh, I noticed. Right, yeah, because since mine has so many QDs on it as well, I have a, a Geisley Mark 8 rail. It has QDs on both sides of the rear of the rail and then um, in the front as well. And then obviously you can mount QD slots on the full length m lock handguard that my rifle has installed. That is not possible with the standard AR-15 furniture on the Diamondback, unfortunately. So that's definitely something you want to consider if you're running a sling. So during the 500 round course of fire, there were several malfunctions, um, but those malfunctions were ammunition related. The Diamondback had a couple of light primer strikes, um, and I think the Radian did also. The Radian didn't have any light primer strikes, but what did happen is um, the, the round went through and it failed to extract. I tried to do an immediate action and as soon as I went to engage the charger handle, it just stuck right there. I knew immediately since we were running steel that had to be a steel case round and I knew already to mortar it. After I mortared the rifle, I have a Geisley REBCG. That's my preferred bolt carrier that I run in my build. The extractor just rip the section where the casing engages, it just shredded that. And afterwards I had to get a punch rod to actually continue the course of fire with my rifle, which is a pretty hard stoppage. Um, obviously if you were in any sort of combat situation, then that would uh, be detrimental to what you had going on. So to answer the question, is this rifle just as good as mine? Absolutely not. But if you're looking for a rifle under $1,000 to get you to the point where you're competent enough to be able to choose exactly what you want, you'll definitely be making a good choice with the Diamondback 15. It ran um, just as good as mine for that uh, 500 round course of fire. I don't think you would be making a mistake. What about you? I think the Diamondback isn't as good of a gun as your gun, but it performs at like the basic function of what the rifle is supposed to do as well. Um, so it, obviously, just like you said, it would be a good option if you're looking to spend less than $1,000, uh, but still have a rifle that's gonna be capable of um, doing everything that you need it to do. Right. The Diamondback comes at a price point to where you can get, say, a $150 red dot, something like that, and some sort of sling, a light, and you'll be 
you know, under fourteen hundred dollars, most likely, and then you you have a fighting rifle rifle set up for quite a while until some of the springs and maybe lesser quality components start going down. But by that point, you'll probably have three more ARs. So I don't think it'll be an issue. And if you don't, you can come see us at fourteen thirty three University Drive in Burlington, North Carolina. Shameless plug. So you think we covered everything? We good? Yeah, I think we did. All right, cool. Did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> if you have any questions about these firearms or anything firearms related, you can come see us at 1433 University Drive, Burlington, North Carolina. Thank you.